So here's an, yet another Gucci bag made all of pigskin, very nice condition. But unfortunately, um, this was also made in the 90s. Unfortunately, um, like many of its type, has um, ex you know gone through this process of appealing and flaking uh, lining. So what I've done is remove the lining, uh, and for this particular bag, this method will do just fine because as you can tell, you would really have to take this bag apart in order to do that. So oftentimes, if you haven't uh, used the bag, it's possibly because his experience is sort of uh, unfortunate situation. So. I have left, as you can see right here, I've left about half an inch. My new lining will be attached to this particular piece. And as I've done before with the Gucci backpack, um, um, this goal will be to do almost invisible um, stitching so that uh, you can see no no visible evidence that this has been removed just so it looks nice and as original as possible so this fabric has some kind of finish the shiny finish right here becomes to flake out and if you touched it if you felt it really is it feels moist and it feels uh, sticky so it's it's actually um, a terrible and unfortunate thing so you couldn't possibly use this bag in this condition with the, with the flaking um, lining. So unlike the Gucci backpack, you cannot turn this over. You cannot turn it inside, inside out rather so that you can access the lining. So this lining will have to be put in there as a sleeve and then sewn to the very edge here. And that's the plan. So here you're looking at the back panel of the lining, the original lining as you can see is kind of shiny and it's very, it feels like suede, but it's actually just fabric. Um, it's already flaking out as you can see here on my surface. Um, so this is the back panel, the front panel looks exactly the same, the only difference is that almost at the top back side of the bag on the inside you have a pocket so here is the, the zipper I've already cleaned all the hardware and actually the flaky stickiness gets right in the teeth of the zipper it gets all over uh, the hardware it's just a mess um, aside from that here is the original tag And this is the piece that would go around the lining, like so. So, why take it apart like this? Because of course what you want to do is cut a new lining. So, um, you already have your pattern right there. So if you can manage to um, very patiently take the stitches apart, uh, then you can free up all of the panels. That way you can cut your new lining pieces uh, using these as guides. Uh, one thing I forgot to show you is this nifty hook that makes Gucci. It was right at this corner of the lining. Um, it's intended to give you a place to hang your keychain. So this um, is kind of a neat feature to the inside of the bag. Here I've placed the back panel where the zipper will go, not necessarily, I mean both of the pieces front and back are very similar. Um, just as a recap, I will be leaving a little bit more, here you cannot see in this image the end of that, let me kind of pull it back a little bit. So um, I want to leave a generous allowance here at the top and then cut this with a normal allowance. I usually eyeball it 
um, in my own ways of doing things. So um, I'm more interested in leaving plenty of material on the top so that I can fold it as needed. And then later I will decide where the zipper goes. So um, I've also folded the material so that I'm cutting two panels um, at once, front and back. start my cutting. Normally you can use your Japanese carving knife for this. Um, in this particular instance I'm just going to use some scissors. the spine you can also do the same method you can fold it like this fold the material that you're going to cut from and in this particular instance I'm going to be mindful that I also want to leave plenty of allowance on this side when I start sewing it to the new panels I'm going to start from the center so that way any leftover material no matter what length will be left on the ends and I can just trim as needed so here I have my folded lining fabric. Here I have my folded uh, template that I'm going to use for the spine. I've lined up the fold areas right here and I will be cutting. Again, I will eyeball it. Um, you can mark it if you would like. Um, I usually leave a little bit less than half an inch. itself is a guide. You know, the pocket will usually be a lot smaller than that. So it's okay to have extra material on the inside. Not to worry. You can choose how far from here to here. Here's the fold of the fabric. This will be approximately the depth of your pocket. So you decide if you want a smaller pocket or if you want a deeper pocket. zipper slit, I will position this ruler here so that I can draw a line where the cut will go. Now I'm drawing this on the inside of the fabric. So this will be the visible portion of the lining. This will be the back of it. Now I will draw a point 
point that dictates the center of this line. Now I will decide how long I want my zipper to be. So remember that I cut my pocket piece as long as the zipper, but the actual pocket won't be as wide. So I think I can do about seven and a half inches, which means half of that will be 3.75. That means three inches, three and a half inches plus a quarter of an inch. If you double that, that would be seven inches and a half. Okay, so this is how I how big I want the slit to be. Here's the zipper. So that's leaving me with enough zipper material to go on the inside. Now that I know how long my zipper pocket is going to be, now I want to decide how wide it should be. So typically, um, here's the zipper. Typically, you would want to give it about half an inch. You want to have a little bit of space for the actual pull to go through without difficulty. So I think about half an inch would be fine. Now for that, what I'm gonna do first is I will mark about quarter of an inch from the end, each end, toward the inside. So I'm going to do about quarter of an inch here. And then on this side I'm gonna do the same. Also, going to measure a quarter, sorry, half an inch now. So here is the top, here's the bottom. I will do the same some ways on this side. And then I will draw my line across here. same on this side and I will now draw a triangle from this point to each corner when you start cutting through the fabric now what you're going to do is you're going to cut your triangle like so and then you're going to cut the middle line across and you're going to do the same here with the end triangle on the side so essentially the triangles will be folded this way and the two sort of flaps have one down, the other one up. That will create an open hole for my zipper. Okay. 
Now you can try doing this in different ways. So I'm going to cut this or attempt to cut it. Softly enough, uh, not being completely sure that it's cutting through, but it's, it looks like it is, mostly. So I'm going to very carefully just finish it off here. Now that you have done that, um, I would definitely want to use an iron so that I can fold this and give it a nice sharp um, more well defined fold. Uh, so I will do that to the bottom here and the top as well as my That should create a nice, sharp, well-defined opening for my zipper. And here it is, all already ironed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to position the zipper using double-sided tape. Side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the material for the pocket and it will be sewn As you can see, it's the shape of the bag. Here's the pocket. This is what kind of like what goes inside the leather piece. I'm planning on folding this over once it's positioned inside the bag. So um, I want to show you what it will look like on the inside. So hopefully um, you can see clearly here. So here's the zipper already finished and here's the original label 
already sewn. And remember the hardware had to be cleaned out. What I also did to the zipper was really, you know, clean the, the teeth of the zipper with like a toothbrush and some dishwashing liquid. And um, here's the rest of it. I don't know if in this lining you can really see. So the plan now will be, let me grab the bag here. Here's the bag. Will be to, and let me kind of show you what the inside of this bag looks like, okay? As you can see, it's mostly lined in the fiberboard or microfiber material that is essentially, I think, sort of like cardboard, very flexible. Um, and that is really what the leather is lined with. So what I would like to do is maybe glue this sort of tongue here so that it's fixed on the back of this bag nicely because I, I really don't like how you open it and this kind of lifts up like that. So I think I will do that. Uh, the next step will be to position this inside. And remember that I left some leftover of the original material here and that's where my new lining will be attaching to. So um, if you ever do this, one thing that I think will be extremely helpful, you see there is some leftover material here that will be folding over. Um, I think one thing that would be helpful is to weigh the inside um, of the lining down with something heavy. I mean, you can picture something like, you know, like marbles or you know, the glass beads used in, used in votives, you know, these kinds of things. Um, to really weigh it down and that way you don't, you're not risking kind of, you know, moving um, the position of your line. You just weigh it down nicely. And then there are different ways that you could do this. So, kind of like that, right? Um, more or less. I think you can see that. Um, I think would be... Another thing that you could do is find a way to, to affix, is that a word? I hope it is. Um, this lining, this new lining to my trim here, you can use double sided tape if you would like, so that you know you've got it positioned just right and then you can begin your stitching. So those are your options and I think those will work well in this particular scenario. Remember, we're doing this because the only other way to replace a lining like that professionally would be to undo all this leather and replace it in one piece.
so here's the lining and it's ready to be put it inside the bag what I've done is um, considered a change of plans here ideally um, I would like to sew the new lining inside and attach it to the strip of fabric I left from the original lining um, but it just didn't work quite well. I did try sewing it and it just it just didn't. So because the the bag itself is very very closed, let's just say oh, here's the bag. It's very difficult to get a, a needle in there to sew the lining attach it to this. I did get a special type of needle used uh, in one of those curved needles used in upholstery. It just didn't work quite well. So my next best thing to do would be to attach the new lining to the strip of fabric you see right below the masking tape by gluing it. And that is the reason why I've included a false stitch right here. So it simulates that it's attached with it, but it's actually going to be glued on. What I will be using is E6000 in black. So that is the reason why I've included a section of masking tape here because I'm covering and protecting the leather that's right at the edge. I wouldn't want any of the glue to get on there. So in a case like this, you want to be extra careful just to keep everything clean and avoid any spills and just do it little by little, you know, section by section so it doesn't overwhelm you. Um, so the masking tape also will allow me to mark the center and that way when I mark my lining here based on this pocket on the back side of the bag um, I can align those two so I'll make my line here and be able to align it um, by marking on the masking tape in this section right here so that I know it's positioned correctly. Now I've, um, for many different craft projects, I'm using this crafter's square. It's kind of like a chalk type marker, or um, here it's called metallic marker. And it's just to make a little line, you know, one that is going to be visible. Depending on your project, you can mark this. I've been using this on so many projects and such, and it just works pretty well. Obviously, I don't want to mark it directly on the fabric here. I haven't actually tried to remove any marks and I wouldn't want to do that so I think the easier thing to do in this case is to just mark it on the mas masking tape and just remove the tape at some point. So I've got my marks there, I will align them and we'll be ready to attach the lining. What I would like to do next is put a bead of glue, not on the lining itself but on the bag, on the inside of the bag so I'll be using, um, as you know, it will be attached to that strip of fabric so I'll do a they're just enough glue that I think will be enough to be secured. Um, and that way it's stationary. I'll just have to be very careful when I put in the first, when I put in the lining. And there it is.
So I've been gluing one side at a time. I've done both sides and the back side. Now I just have the front side to do. Thank you guys for joining this video. It was a fun project, um, but I think it also pertains to a very common problem. So I hope that you um, will find the information useful. I hope that uh, perhaps you can apply some of these things to your projects. See you next time.